Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation, welcoming you to the program. It's Christmas week. It's Christmas week. We made it to Christmas week. Uh, everybody's excited, I'm sure, getting ready to, to take some time off of work, have a couple of days. Kids are taken out of school already, getting ready to celebrate, cause a lot of noise, have a lot of fun. All those wonderful things are taking place, but I, I always, always want to remind us of the reason for the season. There are lots of reasons. There's, there's vacation times, there's time to connect up with family. Of course, there's gifts, there's presents, there's trees. But the real reason for those of us who are Christians is to remember Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of people will debate, eh, was he really born on the 25th? We don't believe he is. Some people suggest it was a different time of the year. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that we are stopping to remember the fact that he was born, that he did come. And in doing so, he came to be our Lord and Savior. And our example, he's the best brother we've ever seen because he lived for us as an example, and then he gave his life for us. God did such a wonderful thing in coming to us in the form, in the flesh of Jesus Christ. An amazing thing, hard for us even to comprehend how God could be his son. God could be himself inside of a body and then speak and refer reference himself as son. I don't have time to go into it this moment, but I do want to tell you and remind you it's the best and the most amazing gift that we've ever received. God came and did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. He became our savior and he became our redemption. I hope that you'll come and celebrate with us this weekend uh, as you're doing all the other things that you have to do. Please, please, please make time to put God in it. What good is it to celebrate Christmas and not have some time for God in it when it's all about what he did for us? So in all your busyness and all the things, listen, I want to encourage you to balance your priorities and put God at the top because it really is about him. I want to encourage you, come to church, take some time to, to pray, to meditate, to think about God before you open gifts, before you open uh, get into food on uh, Christmas. I want to encourage you to take a moment and thank God and remember what he did for you. Now, if you can, come and join us. We'll be here this weekend, 11.30 a.m. for our morning service and a very Christ special Christmas program. You can come and connect with us and be blessed with us here. Um, and if you can't, you can connect us with us as you are right now over the weekend, either on Facebook, through our television program, on our YouTube channel. If you missed any of the previous stuff, you'll be able to connect up with us. But I hope that you'll be able to come and celebrate a little bit of time with us here at Destiny Preparation Church. Now let me take you to the Word of God. This is a sermon specific to the theme of this weekend. It's called, His Name Shall Be Called. It's a wonderful message, well, at least I think so. I believe it's a message for, for us for, uh, to remember the power and the goodness that comes from Jesus Christ. God bless you. I hope that we'll see you here at Destiny Preparation. Bye-bye. The word tells him that unto, tells us that unto us a child is born, a son is given, the government will rest on his shoulders. He will be the one that's going to take you out of this time of darkness and sorrow that you're going through. There's a promise here that in the midst of everything that is going on, God is sending an answer. How many of you are glad that God will send an answer in the midst of your darkness? So the promise comes, amen, that he's coming back, amen, that there's something coming, that a child is going to be born, and this child is going to help to relieve the darkness that's coming over because there will be a new establishment in the government, amen. In the book of Luke, where we read now in the time of the New Testament, this same word comes, and I want you to understand there was a similar atmosphere that was going on at the time. Once again, the children of Israel found themselves in the midst of captivity, once once again, amen, the Lord had separated himself from them because of the things that they had been doing. The Bible tells us that up to this time there had been a 400 year gap since they had heard from God. Amen. God had pulled himself away because they pulled themselves away from him. And now 400 years later, here they find themselves captives to the Romans. Here they find themselves, amen, taxed with tie, with tie, with taxes. They find themselves here struggling and trying to survive. And all the glory of the glory day seems to be gone. And they're looking for help. And so they began, amen, to read the scriptures and the promises began to come back that a Messiah was going to come. And here now, God sends uh, the, the, the angel Gabriel 
to come to Mary and declare this word. The word is the similar to the word that came in the promise of that old time that unto Mary now was going to be born a son. And the Bible says, the angel said unto her, amen, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. And when she saw him, she was troubled. But in verse 30, it says, the angel said unto her, fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. His name shall be called Jesus. And he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. The same promise that was made, amen, in that time of despair in the past comes back. And now God again is declaring that I'm not leaving you in this mit- in the midst of despair, but I am sending you a promise and the son is going to be named Jesus. I want you to understand that just as it was in the Old Testament time. And just as it was in this time, during the time of the Romans, we are once again entering into a time of despair. Mm -hmm. We are entering into a time where it seems like nobody knows what's going on. Chaos seems to be rising up more than ever. Darkness seems to be rising up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The amount of confusion that's going on even in this country right now is deeper than ever before. I was just reading, amen, amen, just a quick clip, amen, uh, in, in the middle of service, and it was talking about, amen, more confusion that's going on, amen, more breakdown, more, more doubts, more things that are happening it seems like nobody knows what's going on anymore it's in the midst of despair that we need a savior more than ever before we need help in the midst of the darkness more than ever before and when it seems there is no hope there is no answer there is no way i'm here to tell you there's only one way and that way is the way of jesus christ Jesus Christ, amen, the answer of God always shows up when darkness seems to be at its worst. When it seems like trouble is at its worst, that's when God will show up. When the people of God get to a point of desperation, when we begin to cry out to God, that's when God will show up. Sometimes it's got to get dark enough for us to turn back to God. Sometimes the confusion, the mess has to rise up enough for us to say, it's enough. We can't do it. God, we need you to come in. We need you to have your way. And when the people of God begin to cry out to God, that's when God will show up in the midst of it with an answer. And I want to declare to you today that the same answer that was there in the Old Testament, the same answer that was the answer, amen, for the New Testament, is the same answer that is here for us today. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. Amen. The times are significant, the significance of the time, because the the time sets the stage, amen, for the arrival, amen, of the answer. The time when things seem to get at their worst, that's when God has to step in and change things. We need to recognize the times that we're living in because the name is going to be more important as we go forward than it has ever been before. In the midst of darkness, the answer comes from the name. Somebody say the answer is in the name. Amen. Not only is the time significant, amen, but there's significance of the name itself that is giving. In the Old Testament, it declares his name. It says he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Amen. We need a counselor today. We need somebody that knows what's going on. Amen. We need somebody, amen, who can give us the right direction. We need somebody that's going to lead us through all the confusion, the chaos that's going on in our lives right now. Listen, our lives have never been more chaotic than they are right now. You've never had so many things that you had to do, so many things that you had to achieve, so many things that you had to buy, such a standard of living that you had to live up to, so many things pushing and pulling at you right now than ever before. I believe if people were to come, amen, into this life, amen, from 50 or 100 years ago, they would be amazed by how intense our lives are today. Amen. How many things you have going on, how many things you're trying to handle and carry and things you're trying to balance. Life has never been more chaotic than it is right now. But thank God for a wonderful counselor because I don't know about you, but I need to know what to do. 
Amen. He comes, amen, the wonderful counselor. He comes to be our comfort and support. Amen. How many of you know we need have, be, need support today? We need an encouragement. We need a, a strength, somebody to help lift us up, somebody to show us what to do. Christ comes to step into our darkness. He is the answer to the darkness that we're dealing with. He is a wonderful counselor. Somebody declare wonderful counselor. Not only that, but he's the mighty God, the mighty God, the, the God of power. Amen. We don't need a God that just sits up there and watches. Come on, somebody. We need a mighty God. I need a God that can step into my situation, that can change circumstances around. I need a mighty God on my side. Amen. That means that he's all powerful. How many of you are glad to know that our God is all powerful? Listen, not only in, in heaven, but I believe the Bible is declaring he is coming into the world, coming into our circumstance. That, that declaration is that the mighty God is coming in the midst of the things that we're going that are going on in our lives. He is the all powerful God. He is a strong deliverer. How many of you know he's a strong deliverer? Amen. He's not just watching, but he's more than capable of delivering us out of the hands of, of the enemy. I'm glad for strong deliverer today says he's an everlasting father amen he's never forgotten about you that's one thing about our father he never forgets amen he may have to allow us to go through some things but he never forgets about you sometimes we mess up amen we got to pay a little bit of dues but he never forgets about you he's the father that's everlasting he never stops being your father he never stops caring about you. No matter how far you've gone, no matter what you've gone through, no matter how far you may have drifted, drifted, he is still your father. Somebody say, I'm glad he's my father today. He cares about you. He watches over you. He, he cries for you. He weeps for you. He hurts for you. He still loves you. I'm glad the father is coming in the midst of my situation declares that he is the prince of peace. I'm glad to know he's the prince of peace, but Lord knows we need peace today. Oh, everything, amen, that the enemy is throwing at you to try and get you, amen, off tilt and get you confused and get you afraid and trying to figure out what's going on and who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. But he comes with the gospel of peace. He comes to leave, bring peace into your life. You don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to cry anymore. Amen. God is on your side. The prince of peace is coming in your life hallelujah somebody say i thank god for peace the name of the lord the name of the lord he is your strength he is your answer he is your prince of peace he is your everlasting father he is everything you need the answer to your prayers is coming not just in yesterday not just amen in the time amen of amen of, of, of the romans but right now he is the answer to your prayers he is the promised deliverer that will come in the midst of your darkness somebody ought to praise him for being your deliverer today Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, he was all those things. And in the New Testament, the Bible tells us that his name shall be called Jesus. In the New Testament, his name was relieved. In the Old Testament, it was titles. But in the New Testament, his name is relieved. Now, I want you to understand and remember, amen, when, when the Bible talks about names, it's not just talking about who you recognize or call somebody by. It's not what you respond to. It is your identity. The name represents who and what you are and so when he gives the name Jesus amen it's not just the person but it's who and what he came to be for us the name Jesus means the Lord is salvation the Lord is salvation somebody say the Lord is salvation when we call on the name of Jesus we have a savior we have a deliverer we have something to set us free we're no longer bound Jesus is our savior today. When it seemed that the world had us bound, when it seemed like darkness had us, amen, covered up, I'm glad for a savior today to be set free from darkness. 
the Lord is salvation. The Bible declares to us of that name in Acts 4 and 12. It says, neither is there salvation under any other. Amen. For there is no other name. Amen. Under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. I'm glad to know that name has been released in our life today. The name has been revealed. We have a savior today and his name is Jesus. Come on, somebody get excited about the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and they are saved. I'm glad for the name of the Lord on my side. The name of God. He is the promise of hope and deliverance in our life. We are delivered because of Jesus today. That's why we're here to celebrate. That's why we have something to celebrate today. Because the name of the Lord is our strength. The name of the Lord is our hope. The name of Jesus is our deliverance the Bible tells us in Philippians that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess the name of Jesus is our name of power the name of Jesus is our name of deliverance it's through the name that we are set free today I came to declare to you that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how dark the hour, no matter what's coming against you, that's why in the old church we used to cry out the name of Jesus. Because it doesn't matter what's coming against you, there's power in the name. We can declare the name of Jesus for there's victory in the name. How many of you believe there's deliverance in the name? Hallelujah. Though we may have been bound, we have an answer today. We've got victory today. All I need to do is declare the name, the name of Jesus, the name, the name of Jesus, that name. There's power in that name. There's victory in that name. There's joy in that name. No matter what's going around me, I claim the name of Jesus. We've been set free because of the name. Somebody claim the name. Come on, somebody shout the name of Jesus. When the enemy comes in against us, there's power in the name. When the liar comes in against us, there's power in the name. When the enemy tries to attack us, there's power in the name. The name, the name, the name, the name of Jesus. There's power in the name. Come on, somebody declare there's power in the name. There's power in the name. There's an anointing in the name. We're set free by the name. He has the power to set us free. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. We have a deliverer. Today we celebrate that deliverer. We celebrate the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, and shout the name of Jesus. Thank God for the name. How are we going to get out of this? How are we going to break through? How are we going to be set free? How is this situation going to turn around? It's going to come through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We may not be able to figure out all the politics. We may not be able to figure out all of the strategies. We may not know exactly how things are going to work. But one thing I can claim, the name of Jesus will bring me through whatever the enemy comes against me with. Today we celebrate the name. We celebrate the name. Come on, lift your hands and celebrate the name with me. The name of Jesus. That promise comes through right in the midst of the darkest hour. No matter how difficult it may seem, I thank God for the name of Jesus. When sickness rises up against me, I thank God for the name. When trouble comes my way, I thank God I've got the name of Jesus. The name has been really re revealed and now I can claim it against the hands of my enemy the Lord is my salvation the Lord is my deliverer wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father the name hallelujah has been given to us and now we're set free because of the name hallelujah hallelujah come on somebody celebrate that name right now thank you Jesus Listen, no matter what you're going through, you have authority through the name. Hallelujah. No matter what's coming against you, you have something you can fire back. I fire back the name. I don't have to worry about being smarter than you. I don't have to out talk you. I don't have to out deceive you. I don't have to be stronger than you because I have the name on my side. Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. 
Come on, declare Jesus. Declare it like you're releasing it today. I release Jesus into my situation, into my household, into my family, on my job. I release Jesus in it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, hallelujah, the Bible says the Lord will lift up a standard against him. When the enemy comes in from every side, amen, the Assyrians were coming in from every side, amen, but here comes the power of the Lord in the midst of it, amen, to set them free. And they didn't have the name, but today we've got the name. It's been released unto us. The name of the Lord has been released Amen. In the Old Testament, they didn't even dare to say the name of God. They didn't have authority to declare the name of God. But God has given us a name. Hallelujah. Whereas they had to call on the Lord and wait. We have the power, the authority of the name of Jesus in our lives, in our homes. So many times we are deceived by the enemy either by what we have or what we don't realize we have. Amen. The enemy will convince you to give up things that you have. And he'll convince you that you don't have things that you think you have. Mm -hmm. He'll work confusion around you. Amen. Many times in those situations where darkness came in, I want you to understand the darkness cannot come in until you first open the door to it. As long as you are under the covering of God, darkness cannot infiltrate. But the devil will try and convince you to come outside of that covering or to give up things you already have. He caused Adam and Eve to give up position that they already had. They already had dominion and he could not do anything in the world as long as they had dominion. So he had to cause them, convince them to give up what they already had. Saints of God, the children of Israel already had the power of God, amen, in their lives under those kings. But when they gave up what they had and turned to the world, that's when darkness was able to enter in. Are you hearing what I'm saying to me? What I'm trying to tell you is don't give up what you have. God has already made you. The Bible says we are kings and priests. We are the head and not the tail. He has given us authority. The only way the devil can infiltrate in your life is when you give up what you have. He can stand on the outside and yell and scream and cry and seduce and do everything he wants. But he cannot touch you as long as you claim what God has already given you. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. But even when we allow the darkness to fill the land, understand, saints, we are allowing darkness to fill the land in this country right now in our societies, in our communities. Darkness is filling the land because people are opening up the door. People are drawn to their enticements. They're drawn to the lust of their flesh. They're drawn to what they want to do. And they're opening up the door and allowing entrance of the enemy into our society. You see it more and more every day. It's getting darker and darker every day. It's getting more confused every day. What people stand for, what they believe, it's all getting muddled more and more every day in your schools, in your communities, in politics, in the government, all around you. It's getting more and more confused and dark every day. Why? Not because, not because of God, because we've allowed the enemy to come in. But the Lord declares that in the midst of darkness, he has not forgotten about you. He's not forgotten about us. And he releases in the midst of darkness his greatest weapon, his greatest power, the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ came. And this is why we're celebrating today, because Jesus came to be the way of deliverance out of the midst of the darkest of hours. When it seems all hope is gone, when it seems like there is no way of escape and no way out, that's when Jesus comes in the midst of it, a promise from the Father, because he will never, what does the word say? He will never leave you or forsake you. He's the everlasting Father, ever watching out for you. And so even when we mess up, when we slip up, when we fail, when we allow the enemy to come in, he's still watching after you. And so he says, I see what's happening, but... I'm not going to allow you to be consumed. I'm declaring to you a word that I'm sending unto you, a child. And that child is going to take back the government, and his rulership is going to be never-ending. Amen. He came in the New Testament, 
But how many of you know he's coming again? That, I told you that prophecy was of at least three eras. The Old Testament era when it was given in the book of Isaiah. The New Testament era, era in the book of Matthew. But it's coming again. He's coming again. And his government has no ending. God will come back in the midst of the darkest of moments of this earth. And he will restore the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of earth. Amen? Amen. That's why we're here to celebrate today. That's why we take the time. That's why we do it. Because no matter what's going on around us, remember this, that Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen. And him we celebrate. Amen. Celebrate the coming of the king. We celebrate the coming of our deliverance. We come celebrate the coming of our savior. The Lord is our salvation. How many of you agree with that today? Amen. Come on, stand up on your feet with me. Hallelujah. This is our time to celebrate because Jesus is still the answer. Tell somebody Jesus is still the answer. He's still the answer. Hallelujah. Many decades and even centuries later, Jesus is still the answer. His name shall be called Jesus and he shall save his people from their sins.